All of heaven is rooting for you. I'm talking about the saints. They want to help us, befriend us, guide us as we make our way through this world. We matter a great deal to them. You know, when Jesus showed Catherine of Siena a human soul, she said, I would die a thousand deaths to save that soul. It was so beautiful. She was so taken with the value of it. Welcome to Catholic Saints on Mission. I'm Julie Anderko, and my mission is to connect you with your elder brothers and sisters in Christ, the saints. Let's take a look at St. Martin de Porres from Peru, 16th century. His mother was a freed African slave. His father was a Spaniard, and his father would not legitimize Martin by acknowledging that he was his dad, his father. And so for most of his life, St. Martin had to go around with the father wound. Like that's one thing he really wanted. Eventually, eventually towards the end of his life, his father acknowledges him. It's kind of odd because at that time then, Martin was known for a lot of miracles and things and it, it seems a little bit self-serving, but it was this father wound that he had to deal with. And many of us have similar kind of wounds, something that should be ours, like a good father or a good mother, you know, or a body that works. Or there's lots of things that we don't have that, that, should, that we should have. If the world was in a better condition, we would have it, right? And so we've got to learn to get along without it and to find our mission in life and to grow in, in the love of the Lord and love of the neighbor and, and exhibit all the gifts he has for us. Well, Martin did that. So he's a good one, especially if we have a father wound or a mother wound. He's a good one to go to. And then consider another person I think that that is really uh, fascinating to, to look at is Jane de Chantel because her life as a young woman was just going exactly how she wanted it to go. She was married to the love of her life. And she and her husband, they were a great couple. They had a, a good marriage and they were really close friends as well. And they had children and finances were not an issue. They were practicing their faith. They both loved the Lord. And then there's a tragedy. Her husband dies as a result of a hunting accident, and it was completely preventable. It was from the negligence of his friend who went with him on that trip. And so he takes about a couple of weeks to die, and she's begging the Lord for his life, and he dies anyway. I mean, so many of us have begged the Lord for something that we believe is good and, and is a heart, a heart desire, and then we don't get it. And then to top it off, she's got to deal with this anger and unforgiveness towards this man that accidentally killed her husband. So later in her life, along comes Bish the Bishop of Geneva, and that is Francis de Sales. And he counsels her on this. And we can take his counsel too by getting to know Jane. Consider children who can be giants in the spiritual life. Spiritual maturity does not rely on chronological age. And so there are children in heaven, child saints, that we can go to and they will help us. They have a perspective. We got to get over this idea that you, you wouldn't go to, to, to a little child for help because these little ch children are empowered by Jesus Christ and they can really help us. I'm thinking of a, a little girl named Little Nellie of Holy God. That's kind of her title. A little Irish girl. She only lived five years. And from our perspective, she had this sad little life. You know, her mother dies when she's a, a little little baby, and then she's sickly, so her father has to put her in a hospital with some sisters who take care of her. But she knew Jesus and she loved him, and she could see the spiritual realities going on around. She could read hearts. It's funny because she was learning to talk, so it's in this this very simple child's learning to talk language. Amazing story. So she influences through her life Pope Pius X. The, the age for receiving communion for children was 12. And because he learned of her and her story, he lowered it to seven. And so she had that influence on his life. But 
Her little life seemed so pitiful and sad, but it was so filled with joy and love. She couldn't wait to go to, go to God. Margaret of Cortona from the 13th century. Her life is a real inspiration for people who feel like they've been set up to fail. So this is how it went. At seven years old, her mom dies. So that's not good. But then her dad remarries and the, the new wife, she doesn't like Margaret. So as soon as, and she didn't treat her very well. So as soon as Margaret is old enough to run away with a boy, she does. And she, the boy she runs away with, he's wealthy. His family lives in a castle. They have a name. And, and so she runs away with him. But because of social status and whatever, he never marries her. She lives with him as his mistress for 10 years. I mean, he doesn't marry somebody else. He just has her, a kept woman. And she has a son with him. And he doesn't marry her. She doesn't get the legitimacy of his family name. But... He gives her lots of gifts and things. That's not what she wanted, kind of like Martin. You know, he wanted his father's acknowledgement. She wanted to be married to him. Well, one day he doesn't come home like she expects. So, but his dog does, his faithful hound. So she takes the hound and follows the hound out into the woods where she finds his dead body. He'd been killed. So she takes her son, leaves the family home because of course they don't want her. And she goes back to her father to be taken in. Well, the, the stepmother's still there. The stepmother still doesn't like her. So they turn her away. And you know, in the 13th century, there's not a lot of options if you don't have somewhere to live. So her story is really inspiring. And she does turn it around. She does. She and her son, they are triumphant over everything even though all these doors have been shut in their face, even though they both have been kind of set up for not a good life. And anybody who's sort of born in the wrong place, wrong people, situations, they can feel that too. Like, ooh, that was set up, but there's hope. And Margaret will show you that a life really can be redeemed and turned around through the power of Jesus Christ. Then I think of Jan Tyronowski. Okay, this guy was in Poland when the Nazis took over in World War II. And he was a real introvert. He didn't like to be around people. He was shy, not just shy, but he was a real introvert. He wanted to be a recluse and would be if he could, but he had a good, you know, he was a good man and he had his mother to take care of. So he had to work in the world. He worked as a tailor to take care of his mother. So he had to put his desires aside and, and do that. And then when the Nazis came in, the, the old priest who was left, because a lot of the priests were carted off, the old priest who was left, he said, Jan, you've got to take care of the young people, the, the young adults. And he was scared to death to do that. You know, they even thought that he was kind of an odd guy, because he, he was, he was kind of an odd guy. He wasn't your norm, normal person you would think would be a young adult leader. But that was the job given to him. Really not suited for it but he had a deep spirituality. He had studied John of the Cross and he had this deep spirituality. So he really did have something to offer and the Lord knew what he was doing because he, he does mentor these young adults and create these young adult groups with different leaders that will lead them. And he mentors all the leaders. And one of them was Carol Waitiwa, who would become John Paul II. That's such a, such a influence because he's a spiritual director, he mentors him, when Carol Watiwa's father dies, he becomes like a second father to him. And he really shaped him into his, into his vocation. And the spirituality of John Paul II is a reflection of Jan Tyronowski and John of the Cross, where he learned it from. It's just, it's so beautiful. So when we think that, oh, we're not up to the task. Oh, I'm the wrong person for that job, Lord. Don't ask me to do that. Well, maybe... Maybe it seems that way, but be open to what the Lord asks, because sometimes a situation will demand that you be the one. We've got all this help from heaven and we should utilize it. We need it now more than ever. The communion of saints gives us access to these people because we're all in the body of Christ. We're all together. And sometimes we forget that. This is how the show will go. 
through prayer and the liturgical year, etc., I will choose a saint. And something about that saint that's notable so that we can learn from it and glean from it for our own lives. And we'll just go deep into that one thing so that maybe there might be several shows that feature a saint because there's different things to go deeply into. The shows will be about 10 minutes, give or take, depending. And I'll post about one to three a week. And that's how it's, it's going to go. And in going in deeply on these little things, we actually get to know someone more. I mean, do you really get to know someone by just reading out the biographical information? They were born here, they were born there, they died here, they did this, and, and this is what they're known for, and they're the patron saint of, and this is their feast day. I mean, really, do you really get to know someone that way? I'm talking about relationships accessing what is ours, a great gift that we've been given in the Catholic Church. I hope you join me on Catholic Saints on Mission and invite others on the journey as well, because with the saints, it's always an adventure.